The way we connect to our network devices, you know, our routers, our switches, is changing. And it's, it's a big deal because it hasn't really changed in a long time, like a decade. You know what? It's time for a history lesson. Let's, let's look back in the annals of networking stuff <laughs> and talk about this. So first, I'll just get this out of the way. We know we have console. We'll always have console. We'll always need some sort of way to physically connect to our devices when they're not on the network yet. So he, he's always going to be there lurking in the shadows, you know. Uh, Telnet, established in 1973. It's how we remotely connect to our routers and our switches. What's the big glaring problem with Telnet? It's not secure, right? So we came in with SSH the biggest and last update <laughs> to our, our uh, accessing or connecting to our network devices in a long time. I believe it really became popular around the 90s and we started using it in our Cisco devices in the past, you know, 15, 20 years or so. So as far as configuring and accessing our devices, that's it <laughs> until now. History is changing forever. <laughs> Let me get this junk out of the way. So excluding Telnet, we have three big players. SSH, SNMP, and the new kid on the block, API. SSH and SNMP might be something you're already familiar with from previous study, and then API might be something new for you. SSH you're familiar with, it's the command line. We go in here and we do show run, and we, we get our information. We do show IP interface brief. If we want to see the host name, we could do show run. Uh, it'll give us too much, so we might want to pipe it out, say show run the pipe and then we'll say uh, include host name. And it'll just give us the host name, perfect. We could also change things via the CLI, right? Go into global configuration mode, host name changed via CLI. Now, quick note, when we're talking about network automation, all three of these guys are used. In fact, in the skill where we talked about what is network automation, we used SSH to automate our devices and we use CLI commands. But the API is the darling of the network automation movement. We'll cover why in a moment. And I would feel so bad if I didn't mention SNMP, the Simple Network Management Protocol. You know, it's used a lot. Even though we don't use it to log into devices and, and manage stuff, our monitoring systems do. We refer to those as an NMS, a network monitoring station. Popular ones are uh, PRTG or, or SolarWinds, and they use the SNMP protocol to monitor device statistics. How much traffic is going through Gigabit Interface 00? What's the host name of your router? Like they can pull all that information as long as it's made available to them. And that, that, that's the kicker with this SNMP stuff is we have what's called uh, MIBS. <laughs> MIBS. It, it makes me hungry when I say it because it feels like it's, I feel like it's a food, um, a management information base and networking vendors like, I don't know, what's all we know of Cisco, Cisco will create these MIBS with uh, ways to look at their devices, look at the stats. And it's not just about monitoring. You can make changes too. It's the simple network management protocol. You can manage your devices. Let's take a look. So looking at that same router, I have an SNMP MIB browser from Manage Engine and all the vendors have their own, um, but you can use it to look at what's available on each device. So you can see here, I have a Cisco MIB and I'm connected to my router here. If I expand this, there's a lot of stuff I can look at. It's all the device statistics. And it, it, it's kind of cumbersome to look at. I'll be honest. I've spent hours going over MIBs to try to pull out the right information I need. Like, is that VPN tunnel up or and just all, oh, so kind of, it's crazy. But let, let's look up the same thing. Like let's look at the host name with an SNMP MIB. So we'll, um, we'll search it. I can say, get the MIBs. Oh wait, let me scooch down here. Get the MIBs, a lot of MIBs. <laughs> it's going to go through every one of them. So I'm just going to stop that right now. I can go down to, let's say, uh, I'll look at uh, system info and look right here. I have a uh, host name. Let's pull that. So I'll pull the information and there it is. <laughs> I, it kind of threw me off. I'm like, wait, where'd it go? Change via CLI is what I have there. And that was a Cisco specific uh, MIB. They have generic ones like RFC defined MIBs that Cisco might, you know, obey. So looking at this one, I can go and find the same information. Like where's the host name? Where is it at? Maybe it's under system and system name. Let's pull that information. Yeah, there it is. And you know what? I'll go ahead and change it. So I'll say changed via SNMP. I'll change the host name via well, that's an MP. <laughs> uh, I'll add that and I'll put instead of get. And yeah, if you saw the action down here, I updated the host name with SNMP. Now you may be thinking, well, Chuck, SNMP sounds awesome. Uh, why do we need anything else? Why do we need APIs? 
why is why, why are we changing what's worked for 20 years? Because it has been around that long. It's been around for 20 years. So SSH and SNMP sound great. Here's why. SNMP wasn't really built for what we're about to do with it. <laughs> it wasn't built for real-time programmatic access, like using programs. It was built for what we've used it for for the last 20 years, right? Just to monitor stuff and maybe update things when we need to. I mean, you can you get, you can use it to change the host name, the interface description. You can bring an interface up and down. It does some pretty cool stuff. It is automation, but it's old and it's not intuitive for what's coming up next. And that's why we have the API. APIs have been around for a long time and you use APIs every single day. What does it stand for? It's an application programming interface. You see, APIs have been used by the programming world to have systems interface with each other for a long time. And that, that's the key right there. It's for systems, computers, programs to talk to each other, not people with the system, right? So computer to computer, program to program. Those are computers. I feel like I need to label them. Those are computers. <laughs> Just such a bad drawing. And that's the big takeaway. And that's one of the big reasons why we're moving away from SSH because SSH and the command line, when you're running, when you're doing show run, you're doing show version, the output you get back was meant for a human. It was meant for you to understand it. It wasn't really built for a program to understand easily. It wasn't built for a, a script to be able to take that data and use it somewhere else. It wasn't built for that. It was built for you. But because we're now using programs and scripts to automate our networks, we need something that scripts and programs can, can more easily understand and digest. And that's where APIs come in. APIs work similar to what SNMP MIBs do. Cisco will create an API for its router or, or a switch or whatever it has. And it's just a way for us to look at the information, look at the data and interact with it and change it and automate it. Just all kinds of stuff. Let me show you. Working on the same router, I'm using a tool called Postman, which we'll cover more in a moment, but it's similar to the tool I just used uh, earlier for SNMP. It's a tool to look at the APIs on a device and test them before I write them into a program or a script. So first I'm gonna to connect to this device. I need to authenticate with it, similar to an SMP community string or similar to the password and username. I said that backwards. Username and password you use when you log into the CLI. I'm gonna authenticate. Um, APIs commonly work with a token that you would get. And look, my router's like, oh, we sent you a token. And I'm gonna grab that token and I'll use it to do other stuff with the router and, and the API. We'll cover, we'll cover all that in a moment. So now I'm going to get the host name information. So here in the same fashion, I can use an API. Now we'll cover more on what this means. This is specifically using a restful API. Um, <laughs> give it a rest. We'll talk about it in a moment. And just looking at the URL, you can kind of figure out what I'm doing. I'm connecting to the host, which is my router's IP address on the specific port I have set up for the API. And then it just goes through the API details. So it's API v1. I'm looking at global configuration stuff and I'm looking at the host name. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that right now. Give it to me. And there it is. It kicks it back in a special computer loving format. Computers, computers love this stuff. <laughs> um, and there it is. The host name is changed via SNMP. Now, of course, I can also change the host name via API. So I've got another one set up here. Change host name. I'll go over here and I'll, I'll tell it to change it to, let's say, changed via API underscore robot overlord. And I will send this change. And boom, it's changed. Look back at my router. Change via API. Didn't I tell you that connecting to our devices is changing now? <laughs> API is the new way to do things. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to use SSH and access it via the command line, for, for now, at least. SSH with the CLI, SNMP, API, they all have their place right now. You can use all three with network automation. But it's important to note why we prefer APIs now. SSH was built for you. It's built for humans to read back stuff. Not built for computers, so computers hate it. They're like, bleh. SNMP? It can work, but it's old and it wasn't purpose built for what we're doing with our new network automation stuff. It wasn't built for programmers to work with things and and face it, people, we're becoming more and more like a programmer. We're not programmers yet, but we're becoming like them. And then the API, similar to the SNMP protocol, um, allows computers and other systems to interact with our, our routers and our switches. The router says, hey, if you want to look at how fast my gigabit interface zero zero is, look over here. I will allow you to see that. If you want to change my host name, you can change it over here. The routers and switches make that available, but the API is unique in that computers, oh, they love it. They speak the language. They love interacting with it. APIs are how computers and computers talk and they stink and love it. Now, there are different types of APIs. 
The one we use most often with network automation is called a RESTful API, which will cover all the details of that in the next nugget. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.